The world's thirst for oil and gas seems insatiable, but dwindling supplies are pushing companies to drill ever deeper and ever faster. Can massive oil rigs survive monster storms to find the fuel? And can mega shipyards build the new rigs fast enough to keep pace with exploding demand? The world is desperate for energy. Every day we consume more than 80 million barrels of oil and more than 7 billion cubic meters of natural gas. But oil and gas are getting harder to find and new discoveries are smaller than they used to be. It's a crisis and it's forcing energy companies to search in some of the most treacherous places on the planet. Like the North Sea. A patch of rotten weather that lies between the British Isles and Scandinavia. For thousands of years, the North Sea has been feared for its storms. Here, 25 meter waves have been measured. So drilling for oil or natural gas here is nearly impossible. But buried beneath the North Sea are 15 billion barrels of oil and 5 trillion cubic meters of natural gas, so it's worth any sacrifice to go after it. And to get to those reserves, it takes a mega structure oil rig. A rig like this one, the Noble Pete. This 9700 ton monster can drill wells more than 7 kilometers beneath the sea floor. Its heavily reinforced hull and legs are designed especially for harsh environments like this. Every bit of this armor is needed, because this corner of the Atlantic is literally a killer. Since 1980, more than 350 North Sea oil and gas workers have lost their lives. Explosion of fire on the Piper platform. It's a grim statistic every rig worker knows. Like these guys, suiting up for their next two-week shift. They're in the town of Den Helder on the coast of the Netherlands, about to travel 150 kilometers over the frigid waters of the North Sea to work on the Noble Peat oil rig. And you thought you had a tough commute. Rig workers have to wear state-of-the-art survival suits that retain body heat. A helicopter crash in winter would send them plunging into near-freezing water. Unprotected, they would be unconscious within 30 minutes and dead within an hour. Helicopter accidents, though rare, are an occupational hazard. In the last 20 years, more than 60 rig workers have died when their choppers crashed into the North Sea. It's a hard fact to stomach. And they've got plenty of time to think about it. The ride takes over an hour. But as the rig appears, like an island in the middle of the sea, thoughts turn to the hard work ahead. The Noble Pete is about to start a new mission drilling to tap a reservoir of natural gas worth almost 350 million dollars. This oil rig is a specialized petroleum predator, perfectly adapted for its mission, to travel the oceans of the world and drill for precious oil and gas deposits buried miles below the sea floor. It's not like a ship. It has a 100 meter retractable leg at each corner. When it reaches a destination where petroleum is likely to be found, Powerful motors drive these legs down through the water and deep into the sea floor, anchoring the rig in position. Standing on three legs like a tripod makes the rig so stable it can drill even during a North Sea storm. And that's vital, because on the Noble Pete, it's all about the drill. Housed in a 45-meter tower known as a derrick, the drill digs a shaft to pockets of oil and gas trapped in layers of rock. But the drill needs everything else on the rig to support its work. Up to 80 people are needed to run the operation, so there are four floors of living quarters. Below that, the steel hull is crammed with equipment. Including six 1200 horsepower diesel engines that generate the juice to keep the drill running and the lights on 24-7. The operation costs over $55,000 a day to run, so any time the drill stops, they're hemorrhaging cash. That's why the rig and its workers are pushed to their limits. Workers put in grueling 12-hour shifts for two weeks straight. 
Then they are helicoptered off the rig for two weeks of R&R. Every job here holds hidden dangers. Crushed hands, broken bones, and even death. The risks are high, but so is the money. Salaries up to $100,000 for six months' work. And that draws workers from all over. Lithuania, Malta, Portugal, Norway, France. Nine countries in all. They earn every penny. Because this megastructure never stops working. But even if they strike the mother load, it won't be enough. In fact, all the oil rigs working the oceans of the world, and there are more than 500 of them, can't satisfy global demand. So companies are racing to build more rigs as fast as possible. But building them calls for another kind of megastructure. The giant shipyards that can mass produce these maritime monsters. One such shipyard is in Southeast Asia, near the western end of Singapore. Called the Keppel Fells Pioneer Shipyard, it's building more mega oil rigs than anywhere else in the world. Some shipyards have just a few hundred workers, but here, 4,000 people report for work each day. Hey, one man stand behind, huh? It's as big as 38 football fields. It stretches over 69 acres, and its only product, massive oil rigs. This gargantuan dry dock is as big as 24 Olympic swimming pools. Right now, this Singapore-based company, Keppel Fells, is building almost half of all the world's new oil rigs. To hang on to their market share, they've got a bold strategy. During the good times, we try to build as many rigs as we can. They know that when fuel prices skyrocket, they can sell as many of these babies as they can make. But they've got to build them fast before the market cools. A typical shipyard builds one or two rigs at a time. But this mega shipyard is designing, engineering and building an incredible 23 oil rigs at once. They cost between $130 and $450 million a piece. And the customers all want them yesterday. Multiply that by 23 rigs and you have literally billions of dollars worth of time and money pressure. One mistake that leads to disaster could cripple the company.